You are joined by Senator Tom Cotton. Congratulations on your uh, re-election, Senator Cotton. I would have thought you could have done a little bit better than whatever you got, but well done. <laughs> well, thank you, Hugh. I, I appreciate that, and thanks especially to the people of Arkansas. I'm very grateful that they've entrusted me again to serve them in the United States Senate. Uh, Senator, you have two colleagues from Georgia. I know David Perdue. I've never had on, is it Senator Leffler? Is that how you say her name? Kelly Leffler, great one who will win her runoff going away in January. Uh, her her website is kellyforsenate.com. David Purdue is Purdue is yeah Purdue for Purdue. David, I don't know what it is. I'll look it up. Um, do you think the president and David Purdue hold on to their victories in Georgia? Yeah, I, I do. Hugh, I, I've been speaking with David uh, pretty regularly over the last couple of days. Uh, I think they're just down to a handful more of absentee ballots and provisional ballots um, that will be uh, resolved by, I believe, close of business tomorrow. And uh, I think it's going to be pr pretty close, but it looks like David uh, will stay over 50 percent um, to win his seat outright. But look, if he doesn't, David will win his Senate seat runoff in January as well. David Perdue and Kelly Leffler are going to be in the Senate uh, in January one way or the other because the people of Georgia don't want far left radical Democrats like John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock in the Senate. I mean, Raphael Warnock is a true radical. Um, that was not really exposed during this campaign in the so-called jungle primary because no one had a reason to expose his record. But trust me, it's coming. So now talk to me about Arizona. I'm feeling pretty confident that President Trump's going to flip Arizona, but I am not so confident about Georgia because of Nate Silver posting new votes are found here and there, and they've got 50,000 outstanding, et cetera. I am very confident about Arizona. How do you feel, Senator Cotton? Well, well Hugh, I think this race is literally too close to call, and I, I would express some skepticism about anyone who thinks they know where these votes are coming from or how they're going to shake out. You're right that it would appear that the president is performing well in the outstanding votes in Arizona. I think he picked up more than 10,000 votes in the most recent counts that ran late in the last night. If he maintains that margin, I think he could have a comfortable victory in Arizona. Um, but, you know, you cited Nate Silver in Georgia. This is the same guy that told us that uh, Joe Biden had a 90% chance to win and that Texas was going to go for Joe Biden and the rest. So I, I would just express caution about putting too much faith in anyone who claims they know where these votes are coming in. The president is in a very good position right now, holding on to Pennsylvania, holding on to Georgia. Um, I don't know why they won't call North Carolina and Alaska. I think those are already done for us. And, and he comes from behind in Arizona, and he's reelected. So, Senator, we're looking at a 52-48 Senate if what you say comes true, and I believe it will. How firm will Leader McConnell and the GOP caucus be? Should the worst come to pass and Joe Biden be the president-elect, how tough will they be on his nominees to make sure that he puts in mainstream Democrats, not radical socialists? Uh, this, you can count on the Senate to stand firm against the Democrats' radical agenda, which, Hugh, just suffered a devastating loss. I mean, these, these Democrats campaigned on things like packing the courts, making Washington, D.C. a state, giving amnesty to 11 million illegal immigrants. They boasted about that for the last two months, and they were crushed everywhere, Hugh. They lost in Maine. They lost in Montana. They lost in Iowa. They lost in Texas. They lost House seats, Hugh. The, the radical, woke agenda of the Democratic Party was thoroughly repudiated. Now, I, I'll leave them to go through the thrashing and the soul-searching on their side, but I assure you, none of that nonsense will even come up for a vote in the United States Senate for the next two years. Have you spoken to the president since election night? I have not spoken with the president since election night. I've been in touch with some of his team, and they feel basically like you, like you and I do. Um, they're uh, in a good position to hold on to what they have in Pennsylvania and Georgia uh, and in a really good position uh, to pull it out in Arizona. And that gives the president the electoral votes he needs. Is there a, a figure like James Baker to oversee? I think there will be litigation. Whether or not he flips states, Joe Biden will go Al Gore just like Donald Trump will go Al Gore. This is not going to go gently into the night. We got six to eight weeks of litigation and recounting out of us. Who is in charge of this? And you can't say Donald Trump, he's got to run the world, and he's not a lawyer. Who is their number one go-to overseer of this, Senator Cotton? Uh, I would nominate Hugh Hewitt for that. Well, a unfortunately, I have a radio a show. lawyer and a great understander of the modern media. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who they're looking for. You know, one person I, I might suggest is Noel Francisco, the former Solicitor General for Donald Trump. 
That is that is a terrific idea, by the way. A terrific idea. Uh, I'm getting an incoming call from the Washington Post. Have they been? What did you make of the media calls on election night, Tom Cotton? Well, Hugh, I mean, it's it's typical that the minute a state looks like they've got two more Democratic votes counted, they call it for the Democrats. But Republican states, they take hours or days to call. Like, well, I mean, why did it take so long to call Florida when Donald Trump was up hundreds of thousands of votes? Yet Arizona was called immediately. I mean, again, it's just the typical media bias you see, and you saw the results that that produced in the election, a historic outpouring of support for the president and for Republicans from parts of the country and from people who feel overlooked and condescended to by coastal elites. Senator Tom Cotton, congratulations. Another six years ahead in the Senate, if not uh, uh, other places. And we'll find out more about that as we progress. Congratulations, Senator. I know